Hi everyone, today we will talk about linear regression. So let's say we have a nice little graph with only two data points. We have 3 by 2 and 4 by 4. And let's say that there's another data point, but we don't really know much about it. All we know is that it has the x value of 6. So let's use linear regression to find the y. Now, the formula has four components. x, the value we already know, y, the value we are trying to predict, b, or the slope, which I will explain shortly, and lastly, we have the y-intercept, also known as a. So let's quickly zoom in on the last two. Now, when I think about slopes, I imagine rooftops. They are very steep in the snowy mountains, but in the valleys, not so much. So if we want to know the incline of both of these roofs, we will first chop them right in the middle, and then we will calculate the rise, which is 12 units in the mountains and 6 units in the valley. Then we will calculate the run, which in both cases is 4. We will then divide the rise by the run, which gives us the slope of 3 in the mountains and 1.5 in the valley. So in the case of our data points, we have the rise of 2 and we have the run of 1, which of course gives us the slope of 2. Now, in mathematical terms, we can also calculate the run by subtracting x1 from x2, and we can calculate the rise by subtracting y1 from y2. And while drawing the steps is definitely more fun, it is much easier to translate a mathematical formula into code. So that's why we will use the second method instead. Okay, but what on earth is a y-intercept? Well, it is simply the value of y when x equals zero. So if we draw an imaginary line from one point to the other, and we continue it all the way until we hit the y-axis, that's exactly where the y-intercept lives. We can calculate it mathematically by filling in one of our data points into the linear regression formula. We either get 2 equals a plus 2 times 3, or we get 4 equals a plus 2 times 4 which in both cases results in a equals minus 4. Now, once we calculate the y-intercept along with the slope, we can then use the linear regression formula to discover new data points. So let's go back to our previous example, where we have a missing value for y, and we only know that it has the x value of 6. In that case, we will plug in the x, the b, and the a into our formula, which gives us the y of 8. Then, if we draw our new 6 by 8 data point on the graph, we see that our imaginary line from earlier is exactly spot on. Now, in terms of code, we will first create our data points, assigning their values, and then we will calculate the slope by subtracting the y's and the x's. Then, we will calculate the y-intercept using one of our data points, the first, in this example, and then finally, we will use the linear regression formula to calculate the y value of any x. x could be 6 or minus 3.5 or any number you'd like, probably including Gugazillion. Okay, but what does it have to do with machine learning? Well, imagine that instead of locations, we are trying to predict the value of a house in Vancouver. So instead of dealing with X and Y data points, we are actually dealing with features and targets. The features could be the number of rooms, the square footage, the year in which the house was built, and so on and so on. While the targets could be the value of the house, for example, 1.5 million Canadian dollars. So let's say we have this giant table full of historic housing data. And to keep things simple, Let's say that we only have two samples. We have sample 1 and sample 2. Then, to simplify things even further, let's say that we only have two features. We have feature 0, the number of rooms, and feature 1, the year in which the house was built. In that case, x1 would be a list of 3 and 2015, x2 would be a list of 5 and 2023, and then similarly, y1 is 0 0.8 and y2 is 1.6. Now, since this time we are dealing with two features, then we will also have two slopes. One slope for the rooms and one slope for the years. 
where in both cases we have the rise of 1.6 minus 0 0.8, but in terms of runs, slope 0 has the run of 5 minus 3, while slope 1 has the run of 2023 20, minus 2015, which gives us the B0 of 0 0.4 and the B1 of 0 0.1. Now, once we calculated the slopes, it is time for the y-intercept, where we also need to account for both slopes and, of course, both features. So instead of b times x, we are now dealing with b0 times feature 0 plus b1 times feature 1. And eventually, we end up with a equals minus 201.9. Now, once we know the slopes and the y-intercept, we can then easily calculate the value of a different house. Let's say one with four rooms that was built in year 2021. So once again, we account for both features and both slopes in our linear regression formula, which gives us the value of 1.8 million Canadian dollars. Now let's quickly see what it looks like in code, where we have two points, each with one target and two features. Now, because we have two features, then we will also have two slopes. As a result, our linear regression formula is being updated to account for both features and of course, both slopes. Now, it's important to mention that in practice, we'd be dealing with millions of data points and not just two. And also, we have no idea if the number of rooms has the exact same impact as the year in which the house was built. It's just not something we know when we have so little data. Maybe if we load the rest of the data set, we will see that the number of rooms is three times more important than the year. And in that case, we will need to update our formula, adding a bunch of weights to our features. But how do we know what kind of weights to add? Well, one solution is using a more complex algorithm for finding the slope and the y-intercept. So, for example, if we use a library named scikit-learn to predict the same data, then we are dealing with an algorithm named least squares method. And if we use it, we see a drastic change in the slope of the first feature. It used to be 0 0.4, but now it is 0 0.023. And as a result, our house is no longer 1.8 million in value, but only 1.38. Hmm. Okay, but what if we have more than two data points? What if, in addition to 3x2 and 4x4, we are also dealing with 7x7? And in that case, our third data point doesn't even align with the other two. So let's try moving our perfect line towards the third point. For this, we will first predict the y of x like we have no idea that it's supposed to be 7. We will plug in the x3 of 7 into our formula, giving us the y3 prediction of minus 4 plus 2 times 7, which is of course 10. Then we will calculate the difference between the actual y3 and the predicted y3, which is a value that we call residual. In our case, the residual is 7 minus 10, which is of course minus 3. Then finally, we skew our line by updating the y-intercept. We simply add to our existing y-intercept the residual divided by the total number of data points. In our case, minus 4 plus minus 3 divided by 3, which gives us the new a of minus 5. We can then sketch our new best-fitting line all the way from the y-intercept, passing it as close as possible to our three data points. And with the updated values, if we try to predict the y-location of x equals 6 once again, then we no longer get the y of 8 but instead we get minus five plus two times six, which of course gives us the y of seven. Now, if we implement the same process with code, it will look a lot like this. And we can of course apply it on any number of data points, continuously updating our values. 
And if you'd like to copy my code, you can find a link inside the pinned comment. And thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please share it with the world. And don't forget to leave it a huge thumbs up and all kinds of comments. Now, if you'd like to see more videos of this kind, you can always subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell. I'll see you soon in an awesome tutorial. So in the meanwhile, bye-bye.